Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. Today in this video, we will be undertaking the topic of boiler feed water and feed water control system. That is how we are supplying the feed water to the boiler for the generation of steam and how the supply of this feed water is controlled on an automatic basis for supplying to the boiler. So let us start. Before we discuss the control system, let us first have a look at the basic feed water system for a boiler that is a medium pressure boiler on board a common merchant vessel. Let's see how it works. So first of all, let us focus on the different elements of this circuit. The feed water tank, the hot well or the feed filter tank, the feed pumps which can be either identical or can be segregated in the form of main and auxiliary feed pump, an intermediate feed heater depending upon the capacity and the trade route of the vessel, a feed regulator depending upon the type of the regulation of the feed that is pertaining to the boiler, the boiler drum itself where the water is stored along with the steam generation drum and thereby the further circuit of the circulation of steam and also the return circuit for the return of the condensate back into the hot well and thereafter either directly to the feed pump or through the feed water tank depending upon the type of design of the boiler feed water system on your vessel. Let us now see how it works. The feed water if I am going to take it through the hot well itself there are walls for the segregation of the feed tank and the hot well. Now, the water being drawn from the hot well will be drawn into the feed pump. These feed pump can either be continuously running type if the feed is regulated through the regulating wall on the top side with a bypass or a recirculation system or they can be intermittently start stop on auto as well as manual depending upon the design that we have through the makers. This feed pump then further supplies the feed water into the drum. It can be also through a intermediate heater to make sure that the temperature gradient when the water is being supplied into the boiler drum is not too high thereby not causing any undue thermal stresses as well as not causing a significant drop in the pressure of the boiler upon too high a supply. Thereafter when the steam is generated and circulated into the lines then the condensate returns back after losing off all of its latent heat and being stored into the circuit with the help of steam traps until it converts into water and thereby being allowed to circulate further into the circulation line and then coming through the dump steam condenser which will have a seawater cooling medium and then back to the hot well. Thereafter as I told earlier it can go either to a feed water tank depending upon the design of the storage and the circulation system on your vessel or it can directly head back to the feed circuit. The hot well usually will have different sections and you will see upon the inspection of the hot well that the first section into which this condensate comes will have a separation medium to make sure that in case if there is any oil contamination. So this oil contamination is immediately visible to the duty engineer who is taking the round at that particular point of time and so we will have either a mesh or a mesh along with a side glass as well so that you can easily spot this and other contaminants as well and thereafter an intermediate overflow system into the next section and thereafter the suction of the feed pump. And this is how the circulation system works. With the help of this feed heater as I told that thermal stresses on the boiler as well as the pressure drop is also regulated. In the similar manner the condensate which is being cooled into the dump steam condenser and then being sent into the hot well we have to make sure that the cooling rate as well as the storage temperature of the hot well is also not too low. So what will happen is then again it will create a too high temperature gradient between the temperature of the water inside the boiler that is obviously just over 100 degrees and the temperature which is there in the hot well. So then again the same problem of efficiency reduction of thermal stresses and all the other problems associated with it will surface. That is why it is usually prescribed that the hot well has to be kept at a temperature at least over 80 degrees and ideally near to 84 to 85 degrees. It has just to be made sure that steaming does not heavily start within the hot well itself. Also in some ships you will have an intermediate dosing unit after the hot well and then thereafter the dosed water with a regulated pump that is a regulator unit and a small piston pump assembly. It will be dosing continuously into the feed water line when the circulation starts and stops or in some ships you can directly batch dose the chemical into the hot well itself. Again this is very individually dependent upon the design of the vessel. Now being familiar with the basic feed water system let us go into the nuances of the feed water control system. Now what used to happen is that when the boilers were too large in the olden generation or the previous era 
द स्टीम रिक्वायरमेंट वॉज एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इवन दो इन हैवी बैचेस बट द रिक्वायरमेंट वॉज इंटरमीडिएट दैट मीन्स इवन दो लार्ज वॉल्यूम ऑफ स्टीम वॉज कंज्यूम बट आईदर इट विल बी अ कॉन्स्टेंट सप्लाई फॉर थिंग्स लाइक प्रोपल्शन फॉर थिंग्स लाइक पंप ड्राइव और टर्बाइन ड्राइव और इट विल बी नो कंजम्पन एट ऑल बट नाउ विथ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ इक्विपमेंट्स different kind of inerting systems different kind of heating systems that are coming and which are heavily dependent on the steam circulation the steam requirement has become intermittent that is we need different flow rates of steam at different points of time and also what happens is that with the size constraint of the vessel due to the trade requirements what will happen is that the boiler keeps getting smaller and smaller for the same required pressure that is why the idle water that is being stored in boiler at any point of time will always be lower now for the same or even higher pressure generation efficiency now what this does is that the control system of the boiler feed water has to be impeccable that means it has to control the feed water in such a way that as i told earlier there should not be a very large temperature gradient at any point of time within the flowing water into the boiler and the water that is already there because that will create a subsequent pressure drop into the steam line also it will constrain the thermal stresses that are being generated in the boiler because of the intermixing of this water at two different temperatures and it will lower the efficiency of the boiler so now to control this feed water mechanism one particular method will not be sufficient that is one variable control will not be sufficient usually when i say that we have to control the level of the boiler our mind will straight away go to that okay we'll take a, a tapping from the level transmitter and when it reaches a certain point it will start and then again after filling it will stop but no that is not sufficient because of the points that i told before what we do is we add another elements into this particular feed control mechanism so let us see how we do that in one of our videos earlier where we were discussing about the jacket feed water system we came across a terminology that i explained in detail which was cascade control so as we discussed at that point of time that the cascade control uses the philosophy of a master and a slave controller where the master controller is fed with input variables of two different nature and a resultant deviation is being fed into the slave controller which thereby regulates the final control element so we are implementing a higher level of that cascade control system itself into the boiler feed water control due to the nuances of the requirement so let us see how it works now first of all as common sense dictates that we'll take a tapping from the level transmitter but let it wait for now because that is the most primitive form of output that we are taking for controlling the level what are the other parameters that we can see the first will be feed water flow rate now why this is important is because let us say if i regulate the opening and closing of my feed valve only as per the level of the boiler so if at one particular point of time the level goes low all of a sudden because of high steam requirement the transmitter will tell the controller to open the valve fully what this will do is it will open the valve then the flow which is constant until this point of time because of the constant feed from the pumps and also due to the constant pressure of the outlet steam line the flow will drop because of the subsequent drop of the pressure inside the boiler as i said because of the level difference so again it will create a state of vacuum now this particular state is something which is undesirable that is why what we are doing is we are also taking a tapping from the feed water flow rate through the help of a transmitter and then sending it into the master controller for the first control element what it does is that it gets a certain value or a certain condition to compare with regards to the input flow condition so we have one variable ready now the other variable that we also need to monitor is which is also dynamic in nature just as feed water flow or even more to be precise the steam flow as i said earlier that because the boilers are becoming smaller so the steam flow will become erratic if we are not maintaining the level and the temperature precisely that is why if any variation in steam flow is to occur we have to monitor that and include that in our control circuit to compensate accordingly that is why the steam flow again the tapping through the transmitter and again into the master controller after doing this the master controller will send a comparator value into the slave controller 
Now to filter out the need to adjust the slave controller characteristic with the help of the level transmitter characteristic, what we are doing is we are directly sending this output into the secondary controller itself. And thereafter, again, the comparison of this output value and being the main holding value that is the level transmitter with the help of the actual level of the boiler itself will then finally give an output value to the final controller element and this will regulate the condition of the feed control wall. This is between intermittent position, fully closed or fully open position. And again, also subsequently control the starting and the stopping of the pump in some cases or again, as I said that if it is a direct recirculation system would directly control the feed control wall. What this does is that at any point of time, the response time in filling your boiler and your boiler getting empty is very small, which means there is no differential lag that is existent between the full condition and the low level condition. And by doing so, what we do is that we make sure the steam pressure fluctuation in the outlet line that is the main steam line is not very high. So under constant demand also and under variable demand also your boiler will be able to maintain a constant steam pressure output with a relatively lower variation in the flow of the feed water with this particular circuit. I hope that this detailed explanation clears all your doubts with regards to the boiler feed water system and also the feed water control system. This is a little tricky topic. So if you still have any existing doubts or any persistent questions, please feel free to drop into the comment section and let us know if we have not covered those points or have missed out any certain things. And we would be happy to come back with precise answers to those questions. Also, do like our content if you find it engaging and share and subscribe to our channel so we can get more motivation to create such engaging videos. Thank you so much.